welcome back to Mrs. B Reads. We are finishing Dusty Bowling's amazing novel, The Canyon's Edge. Wow. Are you ready for this? We're on page 287 in the book. Closing. The gun blasts my ears, blinds my eyes, jumps in my hands. I try to hold onto it, but it slips from my fingers and plunges into the canyon. It's gone. I twist onto my side and once more press my forehead to dad's, my arms draped over him, my ears buzzing, dark smears across my vision. I try to stay awake. I don't have the energy to look. I barely have the energy to keep my eyes open at all. Fire. And then I smell smoke. I hear crackling. And I allow my eyes to finally close with the comforting knowledge that I have set that damn canyon on fire. Mom. Mom, Dad, me. We sit around a smoking, crackling campfire in folding chairs in the middle of the desert. Mom wraps an arm around me to keep me warm while Dad roasts us marshmallows. He hands her one and she pops it into my mouth so I don't have to take off my gloves. Dad pulls another marshmallow off a stick and says, I had a dream I was eating a giant marshmallow last night. Mom looks down at me, raises an eyebrow. Handing her the marshmallow, he says, When I woke up, my pillow was gone. Mom and I look at each other, our mouths full of marshmallows. I snort as she rolls her eyes and gives me her what am I supposed to do with him look. Why did the elephant sit on the marshmallow, Dad asks. Mom chews her marshmallow, swallows it. Why? and her voice is like a beam of warm sunlight in a cold, dark cave. To keep from falling in the hot chocolate. <laughs> That's such a dad joke. Mom and I giggle, and the sound of her laughter is like fresh water trickling through the dry desert. That's a simile. She squeezes me to her, leans down, whispers, I love you, I'm proud of you. It's real, even if it is a dream. It's real. Crescendo. Do you know what crescendo is? When the, the uh, volume level in a song rises, crescendo. The canyon winds are blowing again. The canyon walls are vibrating again. A deafening sound fills my ears. I squeeze my arm around dad, my forehead still pressed to his, it's okay. Sand and pebbles break free of the walls and tumble on top of us. I'm here. A crescendo builds as the canyon threatens to come apart around us. Whatever's coming, we'll face it together. And then, I think it's another flash flood. I don't know, let's turn the page and find out. Still fighting, a crack in the darkness. I look up into the blinding light, a whirring windmill hovering in the sky, the dark outline of a person looking out from the helicopter. I raise one stained, thorn-filled, shredded hand to show them I'm still here, I'm still alive, I'm still fighting, and then being lifted up, 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 out of the canyon toward the light, a beautiful, terrifying, blinding light in the middle of a cold, dark desert night. <sighs> Part three. I put down my notebook and take a drink of water to soothe my throat, dry from reading aloud for so long. Dad doesn't speak. He's been staring out the window, motionless, except to wipe his cheeks every now and then, his left arm in a sling draped over the couch's armrest. Finally, he whispers, thank you. I push myself off the couch and hop on one leg to my backpack. I slip the notebook back in and zip it up. You're welcome, I say. I'll, Dad says, trailing off. You'll what? I'll have more to say later, he manages to get out. So what did she just read to him? Do you remember way back in the beginning of the book? She was writing and he said, can you read your journal to me? And she was like, no, not right now. Dad grabs the keys while I put my backpack on and then we make our way out to the Jeep. With my leg in a brace and dad's arm in a sling, everything is a challenge for us. I clumsily flop toward my seat and he nearly falls over laughing, trying to keep me balanced with one arm. We're a sorry pair, aren't we? He says down to me. I shake my head and smile up at him. Nah, I don't think we're sorry at all. 
He's still mostly quiet as we drive. It's not far. We've made this drive many, many times. Dad stops the Jeep and walks around so he can help me. After I get out, I reach back to grab my backpack and crutches. Do you want me to walk you up? Dad asks. I stare at the house. No, I can do this on my own. Dad smiles, touches a lock of my hair, which I had evened out into a pixie cut. It's like a super short haircut. I think you could do just about anything on your own. He puts his arm around me and whispers, good luck. Dad walks back around the Jeep. He gets in, but he doesn't leave as I slowly make my way on crutches up the familiar walkway, swinging my injured leg. The weight of the notebook in my backpack is heavy on my shoulder. I think about how I used to believe my life would only ever have two parts, before and after. Now, my life has three parts, before, after, and after after. I look forward to the parts still to come. I lean on one crutch when I get to the door, trying to keep my balance. I reach one healing hand out and ring the doorbell. After a minute, she opens the door halfway, a tentative look on her face. There's surprise, <coughs> excuse me, in her eyes, then sadness and wonder as she scans me over, taking in my short hair, the leg brace, the endless scrapes, scabs, and scratches, slowly transforming into bright pink scars. She sees all of it. She sees all of me as she always has. She opens the door widely for me now, and I hear Dad start the engine. The sounds of the Jeep fade as he drives away, and Danielle lets me back in. And of course, a heart stone at the end. If you have not read the author's note and the acknowledgements there, you really need to because it will explain where Dusty Bowling got the inspiration um, from for this story. But thank you, Dusty Bowling, uh, for writing such a terrific piece. And thank you all for joining me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed The Canyon's Edge. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.